Hello again, this is a Chapter 6 video. In this video we're going to have a look at the software lifecycle briefly and we're going to have a look at the external view of Zool Bad. Now Zool the programmer is not a bad program as such, it's just badly written at the moment. We're just going to have a look at that uh, with consideration for design and reusing code and a few other concepts. So if we consider that software changes and it needs to be written and coded in a way which is helpful for change. So it's not just a novel which is written once, once it's written and thrown out there, it needs to be changed. If it's not changed, it, it will die. Um, it's extended, it's changed, it's corrected, it needs to be maintained, it's ported, it's adapted. Uh, there's lots and lots of reasons why a piece of software may need to be changed. Sometimes this work is done over different people and even over decades, so it needs to be clear and reusable. So as I said, ch um, software, if software doesn't continually change and have updates and changes, it will die, it will stop being useful. Software that cannot be maintained will be thrown away and we need to be able to make it maintainable. So this chapter is all about trying to make the software maintainable. Now the program we're going to cover is the world of Zool. A clever little program which we're going to investigate in a second. Now the world of Zool program, the functionality will not change throughout this entire chapter. Which is different to the previous chapters where we've improved functionality. This, cha this chapter really looks at how can we can improve the actual code writing itself. And there's a few different concepts, cohesion, coupling, reuse, and responsibly driven design which we're going to con consider in a later video. For the time being, let's have a look at the external view of the world of Zool. So here we have the world of Zool here. Let's have a look just to see what it does when you run the main application. So the main application is run by running the game class and we've got a single method which is the play class. When we run the play method then a terminal window will pop up with a little message and sort of setting the scene of the game. So we can type help now to get the commands which we have. We've got go, quit and help. So we can type go and then a particular way we want to go. So for example, go east. Now we're in a lecture theatre. Go west and we're back in the main entrance. So feel free to stop and have a bit of an explore around the world yourself. At this point, I'm that's as much of the interaction of the game as I'm going to show. Basically, we can see that we've got two word commands and we've got a world where you can just continually walk around so there must be some kind of while loop in there which allows us to continue to walk around in this world. Um, we've also got three commands which are available go, quit and help and we've also got different entrances to the rooms which are east, south, south, west and north. So let's go in and look at these individual classes and see what they do. Before we do that, I want to give you a quick overview of a sequence diagram which I've created based on this class. So here's the sequence diagram here. Effectively, the game class is the object which does most of the work. So you can see that with the large object lifecycle on the left-hand side there. As we're going to look through, it then interacts with the parser class, which is used to get information from the user. The command class, which is used to create these commands, these two word commands which we're looking at. Command words, which are the words available to us, for example, go, help, and quit. And then the room class, which creates our classes there. So those are our classes as shown in the class diagram by BlueJ. Now, the main thing we're going to look at in a second is the interaction, and we can see there there's a, a while loop which is allowing the game to continue to play. So if you want to do a print screen of that, then fine, but that's what we're going to be working off. So there we have there the rooms which are being used, or the classes which are being used, rather. So let's have a look, first of all, at one of these classes. So let's have a look at the room class. So when we create a room, let's just reset that. Our virtual machine. When we create a room, we need to give it a, a description. So let's create a room called hallway. That's all we need to do to create a room. We then got two methods available to us. We can get the descriptions. So we've got a nice getter there, or we can set specific exits. Now, in order to set exits, we need other rooms. So we're going to need to create another room. So 
there we've now created another room. Now in order to set an exit, I can set room two as one exit, and then I can set null for the other exits. So now I have my room and I have my exits on for my room one, for my bedroom. So that's all you can do with room. In terms of command words, Command words is a class which literally stores the, the words which are available to be used in the program. So we've got a single method in here which tests whether a command can be used. So let's just try that on the word go and we'll see that that will return true because we can use that command. Let's just try it again on another word and we'll see that command is not there. So that's all the command words class does. It has a list of commands which we can use. The next class I'm going to investigate is the command. Now the whole um, the whole idea behind the command class is it literally stores an action word which we're going to call the first word and a second word which is effectively where you would go. So the command word is going to be you go and the second word is going to be wherever that needs to be. So we can create that command there we can put in any anything here so we're going to go, go east in that one and that will then create a command we've then got a number of methods available to us where we can get the get the command word get the second word see it whether it has a second word or whether the word is unknown at this point so that's our command class the next class we're going to look at is the parser class so the parser class will get information from the user so if we have a look at the parser class now we can see that we can get command. Now what you can see here is previously when we've used a parser class it returns a type string but this time it's returning a type command. Now we've seen that command takes two words so it's going to return a command with these two fields with an action word and a second word. So let's just type something here go west please now. Let's just try that. Enter there and then that will return a command object. Let's click on the command object and you'll see that it only actually returns the first word and the second word. So our first word which is our command word and then our second word which is west. It ignores the rest of the sentence. Okay, so that's pretty much all of the classes there. Now what happens is then is the game class will take will make use of all of those classes in order to run the game successfully. So Stop the video now, and uh, this is the end of the video now, but the next video we're going to do is going to be looking at the internal workings of those classes. So hopefully you've got a good understanding of the external view, go have a good play with the external view to understand what is going on in the program. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.